Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to discuss using Newton's method for finding extrema. So in this topic we will describe using Newton's method to find extrema, discuss some of the issues, look at an example. So here's a reasonably straightforward idea. To find an extrema, simply apply Newton's method to the derivative. Now, the issue with this is that you're not really sure if the point you converge to is a maximum, a minimum, or a saddle point. Now, a saddle point is any point where the derivative is zero, but where the function does not achieve a local extremum. Given an initial approximation of an extremum x0, then we iterate. Given x sub k, we simply subtract from x sub k the derivative evaluated at that point over the second derivative at that point. Now, if the second derivative is non-zero and it converges, then it will converge to an extremum. Now, let us suppose that we calculate the second derivative at our approximation of the extremum then with high likelihood it's a minimum if the second derivative evaluated at our approximation is greater than zero. After all, the function would therefore be concave up at that point, and therefore if the slope is zero, it must be a minimum. And it's a maximum if the second derivative evaluated at that point is less than zero. That is, it is concave down, so you have a maximum at that point. If it is a saddle point, then the second derivative is going to be zero anyway, and consequently we will revert to order h convergence. So it will not be converging order h squared. Now we can't simply rely on checking the second derivative, because in theory, if n is an integer greater than zero, and if every derivative up to two, uh, up to the two nth derivative is zero at a point, but the two nth derivative is non-zero at that point, then that point will actually be an extremum. Fortunately, these situations do not generally occur in engineering, and therefore it's not an issue that we will be discussing. Now, this algorithm works very well if we have formulas for the first and second derivatives. That is, we can evaluate an expression to get that, both the first and second derivatives. So this is an excellent place to use automatic differentiation. Given a function implemented in C++, automatic differentiation will give you a function that is the derivative and the second derivative as functions and not as approximations. However, if the derivative must be approximated, we already know that the error, there are issues with errors, and therefore this technique will amplify the error, so we do not want to use this approach. There are better approaches that we will discuss in the next few lectures. So we are going to recommend other techniques. All right, now, if we are at an extreme point, the derivative is zero. Therefore, this is Taylor's series evaluated at some point close to the extreme point, assuming, of course, x sub k is a reasonable approximation. So therefore, f at x sub k is equal to the actual maximum or minimum, plus this error term. Consequently, what we can do is we can determine how close are we to the actual value of the maximum or the minimum. So not how close are we to where the maximum or minimum occurs, but rather how close are we to the value of that maximum or minimum. 
Okay, well, if this is true for x sub k, then we can write down a similar expression for f at x sub k plus 1, the next approximation of the extreme point, or the point at which the extremum occurs. All right, but wait a second. The error of the next approximation is proportional to the error of the previous approximation squared. This is from the an error analysis of Newton's method. Only now we have the third derivative and the second derivative instead of the second derivative and the first derivative, as we saw in Newton's method, because we're applying Newton's method to the derivative. So now we can substitute that into the previous expression. Well, we can expand that out. So consequently, we see that the error in the actual value of the maximum or minimum drops according to the error as to how close we are raised to the power 4. So what this suggests is that we're actually going to converge very quickly to the value of the extreme point. Now here I'm just going to be showing you how quickly both errors drop. So in the middle column x sub k, we are converging to where the extremum occurs, whereas in the third column, we are evaluating the value at the extremum. So in the left-hand column, we note, or in the center column, we note that the error is dropping approximately proportional to the order h squared. And in the right-hand column, we do note that the error is dropping much more quickly. So if all we're interested in is the value of the maximum or the minimum, we can actually end a little bit earlier. After all, even though when k is equal to 5, we only have 2, 4, 6, 7 digits of significance, the actual value of the function at that point is indistinguishable from the actual from the actual. Um, minimum value achieved at the actual extreme point. Okay, that's sort of nice. Consequently, following this topic, you now are aware that Newton's method can be used to find extrema. You are aware that there are both benefits and issues with this. You understand that other techniques are preferable if the derivative and second derivative cannot be evaluated precisely. And we've looked at the error analysis and seen an example. Here are the references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers.